how many of you here in this room think that obesity is a chronic disease? Fabulous. <laughs> Did you know that the Canadian Medical Association deemed obesity a chronic disease in 2015? Did you know that not one of the provincial governments and nor the federal government has deemed obesity a chronic disease. And from the perspective of me, myself, I'm a person who obviously suffers from obesity. I live with obesity. I had bariatric surgery nine and a half years ago. I've lost 130 pounds, not the most I've ever lost, but you know what? This is the journey for me. It's an up and down journey. And so there are good days and there are bad days. Uh, there are crappy days and there are fantastic days. I've managed to maintain 130 pounds lost uh, for my nine and a half years since I had surgery in 2009, January 2009. So I have spoken countless times over the last five years with the Canadian Obesity Network and became the chair of the Public Engagement Committee um, in April of 2015. We met in Toronto uh, and I, along with a representative from Victoria, a representative, another representative from Edmonton, who's no longer on the committee, but uh, she worked very hard for the first couple of years. Um, two individuals from Ontario, one individual from Montreal. Uh, we came together and we formed the very first public engagement committee. And so we speak on behalf of every single person who lives in this country that suffers from obesity. The problem is, is that there are not enough of us to speak up and speak out. And we want to empower every single person who lives with obesity to know that you're a human being and that you need to be treated with dignity and respect, that you're not stupid, that you didn't do this to yourself, that you didn't choose to do this to yourself, and that you want and demand to be seen like and treated with the dignity and respect that every single person in this country and in this world expects to be treated. We shouldn't have to lose 200 or 300 or 400 pounds to be treated with that same respect. And if we do suffer from this disease, and it's a disease that you will continue to suffer with for the rest of your life, you will battle every single day. And because you will battle every single day, you will have gains and you will have losses. And you will celebrate those losses and you will hate yourself for the game, but don't know that that's part of the journey. But the problem in Canada, with it not being considered a chronic disease by the, the, the legislators in this country, and I know why they don't want to. They don't want to because it will cost money. But did you, did, you must know that obesity is the cause of type 2 diabetes. 80% of the type 2 diabetics in the world, 80% are diabetics, type 2 diabetics, because they suffer from obesity. This is a worldwide epidemic. There are countries now that have never dealt with obesity in all of the years in Africa that are now suffering with huge obesity problems. This is a worldwide epidemic, but nobody, nobody seems to care aside from one country. There's one country in the world did you know this? That has declared obesity a chronic disease. You know that? Portugal. Portugal has declared obesity a chronic disease. The problem is that they declared it a, pro a chronic disease, but they did nothing about it. They're still working on prevention, but they're not doing anything about the people that are currently suffering from obesity. You know how many people in Canada suffer from obesity right now? You, Carol, you know. <laughs> I've read the paper that I'm reading this Seven oh. million Canadians, one in four, one in four Canadians suffers from obesity. Did you know that that's more than those that suffer from cancer or any other disease in this country? Did you know that obesity causes 11 different cancers? 11 different cancers obesity is responsible for. Obesity is responsible for causing type 2 diabetes and all the complications from type 2 diabetes. Who in this room has type 2 diabetes? Toe problems, circulatory problems, um, eye problems, uh, 
the, it also causes heart problem. There, there are so many issues that obesity causes within the type 2 diabetes realm. It also causes heart disease, it also causes stroke, it also causes hip and knee and joint replacements by the dozens, by the hundreds. Can you imagine if they actually tackled the problem of obesity in this country, in this world, if they actually tackled the problem and dealt with obesity and found a way to get the weight down and keep it down, they would have 80% less type 2 diabetics in this world. They're so concerned, the Canadian government is so concerned about dollars and how do we deal with this. It becomes the dollars and cents thing. And the people that suffer from obesity, the least sexy disease in all of the disease realms, let's be honest, nobody looks at, at, at obesity and says, that's a good group of people, you know. They're a good group of people and they should, we should treat them with dignity and respect. How many of you have been called a name in your lifetime? <laughs> Absolutely. How many of you have been made fun of? Absolutely. And so, what the Public Engagement Committee is doing is we are slowly building, person by person. I speak out, I speak up, I shout out to the world. And I say that we need to put our voices out there. Do you know how many obese individuals live in the province of Alberta alone? Aside from Cheryl. <laughs> <laughs> that I don't know. You don't know? No. How many do you think? 700,000? Close. We're a little under 700,000. There are about 600,000 Albertans that suffer from obesity right now in this province. 600,000. Do you know how many surgeries were performed? Bariatric surgeries were performed. The closest statistic that I have is a 2016 statistic. So in 2016, throughout the province of Alberta, 585 surgeries. Oh. That is it. That is it. You will have a one in 303 person wait to get surgery in this province. One in 303. Imagine if you had cancer, would you wait two years to get the treatment, just to get the treatment, to get into the clinic. Would you wait two years? But they will make a patient who lives with and suffers from obesity that causes so many other issues wait in this province up to two years just to get in, sometimes up to two years to get surgery. If you lived in Nova Scotia, you would be one in 1,300 waiting for surgery. One in 1,300. This problem is so prevalent in Canada. The, the place to live for surgery is, is uh, uh, Ontario. Ontario, uh, one in 50. You, you get in quite quickly in Ontario. Um, but in, in Alberta, we just, it just doesn't seem like we care. And in most of this country, it just doesn't seem like we care. And, and I know why, I, I figured it out. I figured it out. We have been beat down for so long and so often that we don't have a voice anymore. We have been told, you did this to yourself. Stop being so fat. Stop being so lazy. Get out there and eat a little less and move a little more. How many of you have heard that over and over and over again? We hear it and it's like... Thank you for coming. Bye. <laughs> okay. Thanks for coming. Thank you. So, there's a problem in this province. They treat people who suffer from obesity with no dignity and no respect. We don't have the kind of coverage that we need, and that is what the Public Engagement Committee is fighting. We have a project that we are starting. We've decided, we had three priorities that we, uh, we decided on as a, as a committee. We met in, um, in Toronto in January. We came up with three uh, priorities. We want obesity awareness, education, and support. We want the world to understand obesity and that it is not so easy easily defined as eat less and move more and you won't be obese. We want it designated as a chronic disease in this country. We'll start with one province, but we want a designation. 
and then we want equal treatment with respect to other chronic diseases that are out there. We have a chronic disease. Why is it in this entire country there are three drugs, three therapeutic drugs that could help you with your obesity. They're not going to help everybody, but they will help a great many people. How many of you have tried to get it, the, the, the three drugs? I'm not going to say the names because I'm not supposed to say the names here in Canada. But there are three drugs that are available. And I know that the adult bariatric clinic talks about one of them uh, that is a very, fairly successful drug. But it's probably an incredibly expensive drug at $400 a month. How many of you have coverage for that right now with your private plan? Show of hands. Please press any key on your touchdown keypad to remain in conference. <laughs> so three, three of you. What are the rest of you doing to get to get this drug? Paying ourselves. Paying yourselves. Yeah, out of pocket. Out of pocket, and you're paying four hundred dollars a month. I did for a year, yeah, until I got the surgery. Wow. Wow. And that's the problem. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem that exists in this entire country. Not one drug company, or pardon me, not one province will cover those drugs, not one. Not one federal government has stood up and said, you know what, we need to change this. We need to treat people with dignity and respect and we need to make sure that they have the therapies. Why is it that only one in 300 people in Alberta can get bariatric surgery? It's not gonna help everybody, I know that. But why, why are we waiting? Why are there 600,000 people waiting? It just doesn't make sense. Why is it that we can't cover the cost of a drug that will help, at the end of the day, will help the burden on the healthcare system? It's gonna be a big chunk in the beginning, but the end results, we will save tens of millions of dollars, but they don't see it that way. So. We need, the Public Engagement Committee needs those 600,000 voices. You are part of those 600,000 voices. We need those 600,000 voices to stand up, to shout out, and say enough is enough. We need to build our army, and we are going to start in Alberta. And we're starting in Alberta because three of our, our Public Engagement Committee members are stationed here in Edmonton in Alberta. There's Alex, myself, and Wendy's husband, Ryan who sits as a member of the Public Engagement National Committee. So we have chosen Alberta. We have a connection. Uh, our executive director for the Canadian Obesity Network also lives here in Edmonton and is related to the MLA, um, to an MLA uh, in the house. So he has stepped up and he has advised that he will he will introduce us into the, into the legislature and he will give us a day for obesity in November. We're going to have a day and we're going to need people. We're going to need people to step out of that box that we all created for ourselves. It's like, I stay in this box and I don't let this box because I don't want anybody to really see me. I just survive and I get through this. And now it's, it's a matter of saying to yourself that you can do this, that you can step out of your box and you can say enough is enough. Because if 600,000 people in the province of Alberta stepped up and said, we want coverage, we want it now, and we want it, it deemed as a chronic disease in this province, and if you don't do it, we're gonna vote your asses out of here. The power of the people, that's how we're going to change things. We're gonna change it with people speaking up. But we need the people who have been beaten down the worst. There hasn't been a group of people that have been beaten down more in the last 30 years. The last group of people that have been beaten down more than us were the people that suffered from HIV and AIDS. They went through hell, but let me tell you, they got themselves covered. Everything to do with HIV and AIDS is now covered, and we can do that here. We can make a difference, and part of that is building our army in Alberta. We are a power province. We know that we're a power province. And there are three power provinces in, in, this, in this country. There is British Columbia, there is Ontario, and there is us in Alberta. And they are always fighting to be the first to do something. And those two provinces will be completely ticked if Alberta <laughs> deems it a chronic disease first. And so we have a plan. And our plan of attack is that we need each and every one of you, 
those of you that are online in Grand Prairie, in Calgary, in Red Deer, we need each of you to go to your MLAs, to meet up with your MLAs, to sign up and say, I'm going to meet with my MLAs and I'm going to, I want three things to happen when you meet with your MLAs. You say to them, I, we, these are the three issues that we want dealt with right now. We want better medical coverage. We want our, the obesity drugs that are available, available to be covered by the province of Alberta. It's not gonna cost you anything more to list them on the approved list of drugs. We want it deemed as a chronic disease. That may take time. But if, you, if we have our voice together and we shout out and we keep shouting out and we keep making the point, they will eventually see that it is a chronic disease. For heaven's sakes, if the Medical Association of this country and the WHO has deemed it a chronic disease and the American Medical Association has deemed it a chronic disease, these are the experts, for heaven's sakes. If the experts are calling it a chronic disease, who are the governments of these countries to suggest that they know more than the medical professionals. And it's our job now, as patients, as people that live with this disease, to stand up, to speak out, and to make that difference. It's as simple as that. We're tired of being beat down. We're tired of being the person that was called the name. We're tired of being made fun of in the TV shows and in the movies. And if we go to an, an adult uh, comedy show, we don't, we don't go. How many of you go to adult comedy shows? Hmm, interesting. Why don't you go to an adult comedy show? Is it because you might be the brunt of the joke? Mm -hmm. Because it's still okay to make fun of fat people in the 21st century. It's still okay. It's still the only thing that you can have bias towards and hatred towards. It's like, I didn't choose this. You didn't choose this. You didn't choose this. You didn't choose it. No one would choose to be a part of this club. But yet there's seven million of us in this country that are a part of this club. And so it's now time to step out of that box, contact your MLA, follow our project. Our project is to reach out to all of the MLAs in this province and to convince them, A, that we need to have better drug coverage, that the drugs need to be covered, that we need to have more multidisciplinary facilities like the bariatric clinic at the Royal Alexander Hospital. I know that there are four others or three others in the province. We need more. One bariatric clinic is not enough. It's not enough. We are patients that suffer from this disease for the rest of our life. We need to have continued care and currently we don't have continued care. There is a point where you will be asked to spread your wings and fly away and do it on your own. And we couldn't do it on our own before. What makes you think that we can do it now? Seriously, like, let's look at this from a, a practical point of view. If you couldn't do it before, yes, we have surgeries and yes, we have therapies, but we still need people to talk to. How many of you are convinced that your obesity is related to some kind of incident that is sort of mentally health related? I'm one of them. I'm one of them. I know, I know what it means to be mistreated. I know what it means to be labeled. I know what it means to be shamed and beaten down and called every name in the book. I know it. And I know each and every one of you know it. And together, we stand up, <coughs> excuse me, we speak out with the loudest voice that we possibly can, and we will make a difference. So I know at the back of the room, <coughs> there's a sign-up sheet uh, that Wendy has put together. And the sign-up sheet is that you're, you're prepared to go speak with your MLA, that you're prepared to say that these, we want the message to be the same. We don't want everybody to go into their, to their MLA and go in and say, well, this is what we want and this is, we want the message to be the same. And that message is three simple things. We want better access to treatment, <coughs> we want it better coverage for the medical treatments that are available, and we want it designated as a chronic disease. Those are our asks. We deserve it. We deserve to be treated with the same dignity, the same respect, 
that every single person in this world expects to be treated with. It is as simple as that. You are worth it. You guys know that. You're here, thank you so much. You are here, and you speak out every day, and you're, you're supporting each other. So I know you have it in you, but I, I need you, and the Public Engagement Committee needs you, and the Canadian Obesity Network needs you to actually physically put your box aside, step out of it, and say, I'm not going to take it anymore. I want us to roar. I do. I really want us to roar. I want us to make such a difference in this province that every other province will see that Alberta has made that change. And I guarantee you, if Alberta makes that change, British Columbia and Ontario will be on board to make that change, and the next thing you know, every other province will be making that change. And then the federal government will have no choice but to declare it a chronic disease. And that's the next step for us. This is the start. There's a conference that's happening in uh, Ottawa next year. Every two years, the Canadian Obesity put, uh, Network puts on a summit. It's a, it's a scientific summit, generally the collection of people, doctors, dietitians, people that are doing research and uh, work in obesity. And they gather every two years to have their conference. And the Public Engagement Committee has been invited the last two times because they finally recognized that we have a voice. And sh they shouldn't be doing anything. There's a, a saying that a friend of mine who runs an organization in England, his name is uh, Ken Clare, and he coined something that we, we globally took, and it, it, the phrase is, nothing about us without us. As simple as that. You will do nothing about obesity without hearing the voice of the people who live with obesity. Because there is no better expert, there is no better expert than the person who actually lives with this chronic disease. We know it better than any doctor. How many, like we know it better than Dr. Sharma knows it. Dr. Sharma knows the treatments. He doesn't know what it means to be a patient who lives with obesity. And we need to be that voice. All of us, collectively, seven million of us in this country, saying enough is enough. Nothing about us without us. As simple as that. I do. I want to hear you guys roar. I want to roar. I do. Katy Perry has the song. And I said to, I said to Alex, I said, that's going to be the theme song. When we meet in, in Ottawa, we're putting on our very first summit for patients. So the day after the conference ends for the scientists, we are going to put on our very first engagement for the public where we're going to have speakers speak an entire day. We're, we're modeling it after the American group, the, the, the OAC, the Obesity Action Coalition. So they are a patient-run group. They meet every year and they have a summit, a three-day summit, and they have people coming from everywhere in the US to come to their event. We're going to start small because we're still small. We're just starting. But we are going to build a voice and we're going to march on the legislature. We're going to march on Parliament in Ottawa next April with however many people that we can gather to make a difference. And so it's going to start here. We want you to reach out to your MLAs. I know it. I know going in and trying to talk to somebody about obesity is it's a very painful conversation. It can be. I know I cry. Every time I talk about it, I cry. I make other people cry because my journey is just, it's a shitty ass journey, but it gets the point across and people understand it. And it's like, I know that Wendy had gone in to see her MLA already. And when she was speaking, she, she's trying to control herself, but she's welling up and I can see it. It's like, and that's the passion. That's the passion about what we're doing here the pain that we're living with, and the fact that we need to make a difference. We need to affect some change. So I implore you to please join our challenge to reach out to your MLAs, reach out to your MLAs in Calgary, reach out to your MLAs in uh, Grand Prairie. If we could have, I know Wendy's gonna go up to uh, Fort McMurray and is going to reach out to the, uh, the MLA up in Fort McMurray. We, we need a voice. We, we can't forget that there are 600,000 of us in this province, and 600,000 people can make one hell of a difference in putting a government into office. We're not asking much. We're asking 
for obesity to be treated with the same vigor, the same respect as any other chronic disease out there. And I thank you. Just a couple of other things I want to pass on. Can I just say something? Yeah. Okay. If this is something in your heart that you're really like, you know what, I want to do this. Um, I want to take that step, be that voice. And you're like, you do not have to go to these meetings alone. Okay. The Canadian Obesity Network is there to support you. And a member from the Canadian Obesity Network, whether it's someone from the office, someone from the public engagement committee, I'm representing, I'm the chair of the local committee. So somebody can accompany with you if that makes you feel comfortable. Absolutely. And we also have in the back is the report card because we also want, um, because that's some of the messages we'll be communicating in those meetings as well. So if you're feeling like, you know what, this is something I want to do, just be in mind that you don't have to do it alone. Somebody from Canadian Obesity Network will go with you. And if you want to know some more information, we do have the 2017 report card on, um, on obesity here for you as well to take home and just get yourself really enriched the statistics of obesity in Canada. So this is, this is the report card and uh, the Canadian Obesity Network um, had, uh, we, we hired somebody to put together the report card and it was two years of research to look at how obesity is treated in this country. And the numbers are alarming. The, there's the, the, the provinces have failed, the government of Canada has failed. It is filled with some very relevant information. And I ask, I ask you all, take one. We have, I brought enough for everybody in this room so that you can read, you can be updated, so that you can know what you're dealing with and why it's so hard to get into the clinic. Why, why it's so hard to get into the clinic. I, I just, I, it boggles my mind how somebody has to wait two years to get in to get treatment. And in two years, you could die from the complications of the disease that you have. Let alone getting qualified to do it. Let alone getting qualified. Because <laughs> if you have too many comorbidities or if you have other issues, you may not get approved for surgery. Okay. We, we, we need more multidisciplinary clinics. We just do. We need better treatment. We need more than 70 doctors that are currently trained for obesity in Canada. We need more than that. We only have 70. 70 doctors for an entire country of 36 million people to deal with obesity. The biggest problem in this country right now, obesity. They, they don't even treat you. The, the word, sorry. They don't even educate doctors that are leaving school right now with any kind of, of education on obesity. They don't have one single exam question on their final exam to become a doctor that deals with obesity. Not one. That's crazy. It's like, I don't know if we'll ever be able to affect the Medical Association of Alberta or the Medical Association of Canada in trying to force them to educate their people. But if, if they're not going to educate their people, then we need to educate them. And I do it. I do it all the time. I, I speak to Alberta Health Services on the daily, like literally on the daily. I am presenting something all the time. So it's, it's about having a voice and speaking up and making a difference. And, and I know that you have it in you. And as Wendy said, you don't have to do this alone. We will be there. Call the office. There are business cards there. If you have it in your heart, if you, if you feel like you can do this, and it is a huge step, and I know we're asking you to step out of a box that you've been so comfortable in. But if you can do it, we would love for you to do it, to reach out to your MLA. If you want help, call, and the persons that are in the office will arrange to be there. If you want to have one of us with you, one of us will always make time for you. We will. Okay? Two other things. The Public Engagement Committee, the Canadian Obesity Network does an image bank that shows uh, people that live with obesity uh, in, in a positive light. There are not a lot of images out there that the, the journals and the news, newspapers and um, publishers can use of positive images showing obese individuals. Uh, Alberta Health Services brought it to my attention last week. Uh, they're putting together a project. There's an actual project that's going on in uh, Medicine Hat right now. They're creating an entire wing, the Medicine Hat, Hat Hospital, that will be a bariatric wing. And they're not just dealing with bariatric surgeries, but anyone who lives with obesity will be able to go to that wing, and there you will have doctors and nurses and triage people that deal with and understand obesity. And it will be the first 
in this country. It will be the first in this province. And they are going to use this hospital and this idea as a framework for bringing it to further hospitals in this province. And I can see it going across the country. They recognize it. They really, truly do. But what they realized when they were trying to put together educational materials was there are not a lot of positive images of people who live with obesity in the medical field. Mm -hmm. So there are not a lot of pictures. And so they are doing a photo, sh a photo, um, a photo shoot on Monday. Uh, there's a one young lady here that I, I know introduced herself to me. I can't, yeah, yes, she is going to be one of my models. I will be modeling. Um, <laughs> if you are interested, uh, Cheryl, did, I'm assuming you posted it on? I seen you ask Wendy to do it, so I did it. Did, um, Wendy, you posted? Uh, not yet. Okay, if you could post the information and just call me, or just call me. If you'd like my number, I give out my number free, okay? Because <laughs> it, it's about building a base of, of, of wonderful photographs that can show, and, that, and it's, it's an open, um, it's an open uh, photo gallery that is open to uh, media outlets, the news, uh, so that they can show positive images, not images of, of large people sitting in their chairs with no heads or shot from behind because we wouldn't want to show them with their faces because Lord have mercy, they're, they're so horrible, those human, be human beings that suffer from obesity. They're so ashamed of themselves. And frankly, I'm not ashamed of myself. I live my life, there was a time when I was ashamed of myself. I came out of that box a long time ago when I jumped out of the closet at the same time. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's important that we, we build up this, uh, this library. So if you're interested in coming to the shoot, it's at the ECHA building next Monday from 3.15 to 5. You would have to sign um, consents for about Alberta Health Services because they plan on using the photographs. And then you would have to sign a consent for the Canadian Obesity Network because we, it will go into our image bank as well. Positive images, they are wonderfully shot. Uh, if I could give you the link right now, I would. Uh, but you would, you would get the photos. Anyone that does the photo shoot will actually get to see the photos before they're posted so that you can say, you know what, I don't like that one. It doesn't, it doesn't make me look good. So you, you get an approval before they actually post up. But we need people with respect to that. Uh, and the other project is something a little more personal. It's called The Weight of Living. And I don't know if any of you have gone to the Canadian Obesity Network website, currently under, re -under, under reconstruction, but there is a, a segment that is called The Weight of Living. And what The Weight of Living is is a collection of video footage that is shot with Canadian Obesity Network people. And it's essentially you telling your stories and uh, sharing your journey. It can be painful. Uh, it can, because it's, it's obviously bringing up the journey that you've had. But it, I, f I find it very cathartic. I speak about my journey often now. Uh, I remember there was a time when I, I couldn't speak about my journey because it was so painful, but I found that speaking about it helps. It really helps. Uh, and so every time I speak, I feel great. I feel fantastic. Every time I get up and, and have the opportunity to speak to people like you and hopefully have you see yourself in a different light that you can do this. It just makes me feel that much more empowered because I know that we can change the world. I always say that we can do it one person at a time or we can do it a group of 35 at a time or 100 at a time. I speak and that's what I want. I, I just want us to change the world because I believe that we can. Mm -hmm. So we need people to tell their stories. If you want to contact the Canadian Obesity Network, again, there are business cards at the back. Please call, say that you'd like to do a story. They can email you the questions that they would ask. You don't have to answer every question. It's up to you on how you tell your story, but we need stories. We need people to understand that this is so much more than eat less and move more, that it's so much more complicated, that we all have a journey. And my journey may not be the same as yours, Cheryl, or is the same as yours, Leslie, or the same as yours, Kylie, but we all have a journey, and we need to share that journey so that people, the people that don't understand obesity, can learn to understand obesity. Okay? So I want to thank you. I'm quite passionate about this, obviously. <laughs> I'm quite passionate. So if, I, if you would like me to come back and talk more about anything, I would love to do it. But 
I I'll mean, have our theme song next time. I've, I've been thinking I want to. No, <laughs> this is our fight song. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure the Roar song. Oh, you don't know Roar by. Well, like, kind of, but I know. <laughs> it's a good one. It's, it's, it's an empowering <laughs> song. It's like, I, we, were, we were talking about what song are we going to. Like, I need a song. I need, because I'm musical. I'm a disc jockey. I've lived with music. Music saved my life over and over and over again. When I was in the worst places, going through the hell that I was going through when I was. 13 and 14 and 15, it was music that saved my life. ABBA, for heaven's sakes, ABBA <laughs> saved my life over and over again. But Roar is just an empowering song. And it just tells you that you can get up there awesome. and you can do it and you can roar and you can shout it out and you can say enough is enough. We are not going to take it anymore. There's another one. A good we're Twisted Sister take. classic. <laughs> we're not <laughs> going to take it. That we are going to fight and that we are going to make a difference. And that's how I think. We need a mashup, obviously. Yes, a mashup. <laughs> <laughs> so I thank you for having me on behalf of the Canadian Obesity Network Public Engagement Committee. Thank you so much. And I would ask, as I say, take the books, take the information, read it, get, become knowledgeable and be even more knowledgeable than you are because there's no doubt that you are knowledgeable but there's so much more to know mm -hmm. and when you're empowered with information it just makes us look a little less stupid than they think we are because I can't tell you how many times I've been told well you're not smart how could you be smart if you did this to yourself it's like I actually have a full-time job and I work for the Crown Prosecutor and I have two children and have, she goes to university, so I'm, I'm not stupid. We're not stupid. We're actually intelligent human beings, and we deserve to be treated with that, that dignity.